The following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report, TV and radio. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Live from the 540 ESPN Studios in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, this is the Pro Wrestling Report with David Hero, Frank Cosentino, Linda Kay, and your host, Damian Nelson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report here on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com, and all over the world on several other media channels. CM Punk closing out WWE Raw, and uh, we're going to go ahead and pause that here in the studio so we can take a look at it when it happens during the break so we don't miss anything, but an explosive Raw so far tonight, specifically between CM Punk and Vince McMahon. Damian Nelson here along with David Octavius, the Tiberius, the alleged Backyard Hall of Fame hero. I'm going to punch you in the mouth. And the lovely social media diva, Linda Kay. And uh, we're going to be talking about WWE Raw tonight, as it was. We're also going to be talking about last night's Destination X on pay-per-view. Destination X. A couple of people gone from TNA Wrestling and big news pertaining to TNA Impact in a few months, David Hero. Not this Thursday, but in a few months. Hey, no spoiler talk tonight, okay? What do you mean? Everybody knows Impact's on Thursday. I know how you operate, Damian Nelson. I'm not a doctor. How about CM Punk? Yeah, how about that? Talking him into the building tonight. He said that. He did say that. He obviously (laughs) listens to the show. We're going to be taking your phone calls. The number 414-276-3776. That's 414-276-3776. Or all over the world at 1-800-990-ESPN. 1-800-990-3776. Linda, we are also available on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, yeah. Facebook.com slash Pro Wrestling Report and on Twitter.com slash PWR Show. Now, I'll tell you right now already, Damien, lots of stuff about CM Punk, of course. Shocking. Yes. Very shocking. Well, CM Punk, obviously the talk of the town again in professional wrestling, and he started out WWE Raw tonight by reiterating his comments of a couple of weeks ago and uh, saying that he's out there to say what nobody else wants to say or can say. And that everyone in WWE are nothing but a, sh- a bunch of shameless butt kissers. And I thought it was quite clever that he brought a megaphone to the ring with him, just in case his mic got cut. Uh, twice we heard a CM Punk chant in Boston, John Cena's hometown. And CM Punk refers to himself as the hottest property in the industry today. And also, as it pertains to this Sunday's match at Money in the Bank, he referenced the last time John Cena was quote-unquote fired and says that if it goes any way like that, John Cena's got nothing to worry about. The straight shooter, if you will, CM Punk, continues on his wild ride tonight on Raw. David Hero, I guess we're going home and going to Money in the Bank this Sunday on pay-per-view. Your thoughts on what we've seen so far out of CM Punk tonight? Well, CM Punk definitely made tonight's show the best go home show in quite a while. If it didn't make you, if put it this way, if CM Punk didn't make you want to order this pay per view, there's nothing else they could have done to do that. Isn't this old school to a degree? CM Punk mentioned it. You've said it many a time. He is doing what, or he was doing he what? Talked people into the building. What does that mean? Talk people into the building. What? what I mean. Isn't, they, isn't it wrestling that does that? It isn't way. it great wrestling matches that does that? Well, not always. Oh, I thought that's what everyone hey, wanted. There, there were some great wrestling matches on uh, DX last night. Two or three of them. But that didn't fill up the building for him. Well, it filled up the building because Universal was busy that day. Wow. What I'm saying is, is CM Punk did the old school theory of wrestling make the people want to come see it. Make them get, get them emotionally invested. They did a great job. They finally built up a pay-per-view the right way. Of course, it's really the only match that people are really talking about because the other matches, what, they only announced, what, three other matches? Uh, there's right? a, there's two Money in the Bank matchups, a World Championship match, a WWE Championship match, and then okay. Big Show and Mark Henry. Yes. So thank, On a pay-per-view. Thank God for CM, CM Punk. Where was Ray Ray tonight? Uh, you know, I don't know. Thank God for CM Punk. What What do you mean? I mean, obviously, because, you just said okay, he, he, Here's an example. They had Ron Killings, our truth last month, right? Nobody Oh, cared. yeah, that. When was the last time John Cena had a world title match where people actually thought his opponent had a chance to win? 
When he was champion? Yes. Anytime, for that matter. There were a couple times you thought Wade Barrett might take that title away. Yeah, but nowhere near as strong as right now. Absolutely not. And isn't that what's great? Because either man can win. And you think back to Triple H Taker at Mania. You sort of knew Taker was going to win, but there was that chance that Triple H just might do it. There is that chance. And let me say this. I'm going to go on record. I don't do Be the Booker segments, but I'm going on record. This is an official statement from Damian Nelson, the host of the year. CM Punk will win the WWE Championship Sunday. I guarantee wow. you. Are you is DNHS in that? I don't do that, but I will. Uh, I will. I will say that CM Punk will win the WWE Championship on Sunday. He will then not appear on Raw Monday night. The WWE title will be in turmoil because the contract wasn't signed tonight. By the way, no, it was and not. that is great intrigue for the next couple of weeks leading into the biggest party of the summer. Summer Slam. Summer Slam. So, Damon, you're saying he's going to leave of course, the building with the belt. Does, does that mean Cena is fired? Or is that... Oh, that? absolutely. He's fired. Just as fired as he was when he lost to the old leader of the Nexus. Boy, that means Raw would then become Alberto Del Rio's show. But you already knew that. CM Punk's going to come back down the road. David Hero, you said weeks ago, what about CM Punk? Oh, he's taking some time off. He is taking time off. They invested way too. Believe me, he's he's already signed. There's no question about it. It's I just, think there is question about it. No, believe me, he is signed under contract. Maybe I'm sure the provision is he he his start date is maybe September. Would 1st. you have thought Jeff Jarrett didn't have a contract back when that situation happened? Would you have thought that uh, that uh, who was it? Who was it? Who was it? Why is it escaping me? Would you have thought that Bret Hart and that situation would have gone the way it did? Would you have different. thought that Lex Luger would have gone to Nitro on its first night? Well, it's completely different. How is it completely different? Because they're putting it out there. They're, they made it into a storyline. Jeff Jarrett was not a storyline. Lex Luger was not a storyline. Bret Hart was not a storyline. Bret Hart was a storyline. No, it was not. Bret Hart was a storyline. From August of 97 through when he left in November, that was a storyline. But it wasn't on TV that his contract was expired. It expiring. was not as transparent as this. But we got Mr. McMahon out of that, and I think that was deliberate. Oh, it might have been. But CM Punk is a different scenario. I agree. CM Punk has already re-signed a contract. You're saying long-term. You're saying he's re-signed a long-term contract with WWE. Oh, absolutely. I disagree. I don't think it's as obvious as you think it might be. Well, if I agree with you, then we'd both be wrong. Trust me, he's signed. There's no way Vince McMahon invests Sylvan is, that it, Sylvan much. is his lawyer. We talk. Vinny Mac and company would not invest that much into someone that's leaving. There's no way. How long is Punk going to be out for? You said. I, I say in, anywhere from three to six months. Here's the perfect scenario. Are you ready? And yes. I want this marked Tillman on the tape, all right? Oh, my gosh. Think of it this way. Picture it. <sighs> Sicily, September 24th. Picture it. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but how... How much of an ignition in the wrestling world would it be if CM Punk CM Punk wins the WWE championship and takes that WWE championship to Ring of Honor Wrestling and is part of their big debut on Sinclair Broadcasting? It would not happen because CM Punk is being a rebel doing it. It would happen because everybody's in on it. And that could very well be. Because what does that do to TNA Wrestling, David Hero? Makes them number three. And an afterthought. Well, not an afterthought. An afterthought, at least on the short term, going into their biggest pay-per-view of the year, Bound for Glory, but which gives us no though, threat. Listen, who's to say, now let's just play devil's advocate here. I like the devil. That CM Punk doesn't have a new contract. He does win the title and does leave, and he shows up on Ring of Honor TV with the belt blurred out. Ooh, it's 1992 all over again. Yes, But then that's another case. Ric Flair, he did that to WCW. They didn't make a storyline out of it. Yeah, but Flair had the $40,000 deposit to carry the belt with him. Are you talking about recently or back in 92? Both. (laughs) I think that scenario would be fantastic. Tremendous. Tremendous. Do I think it's going to happen? I didn't say that. Do I think CM Punk's going to win this Sunday? When we're going to be ringside at uh, Money in the Bank? Ringside. Ringside. Oh, I didn't tell you about that? No, I didn't get that memo. There, there's so much good that comes out of taking your corporate Amex away. <laughs> Let me just <laughs> I say guess that. so. But uh, 
I, I firmly believe CM Punk's going to walk out the champion. I'm interested to see what he said at the very end of Raw. Well, then and, go to Bricks. We can watch it. We're going to take a time out oh, so we can great. watch that. David, you, you're just so full of great ideas. <laughs> Must be those 30 points you scored in the draft last night. This I is did. the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. 540 ESPN. You think you know me. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. Damian Nelson here along with David Octavius and Tiberius, ugh, just David, and the lovely Linda Kay, the social media diva, July 11, 2011. 7-Eleven, uh, free Slurpees today. We got to make sure to go. Wait a minute. I don't understand the relation. 7-Eleven, they sell Slurpees. Oh. Yeah. On the heels of Destination X and on the steps of Money in the Bank this Sunday, we still have a lot to talk about tonight, including Destination X from last night and some big news coming out of TNA Wrestling over the last few days, if not the last few hours. But we did just get a chance to watch the final moments of WWE Raw. And, uh, well, David Hero, CM Punk has done what few stars have been able to do in WWE in recent years, and that is, as you talked about earlier, and as he said tonight, talk people into the building. Chicago will be white hot this Sunday night for Money in the Bank. CM Punk did not sign the contract, at least on TV, which leaves that big open question. And what CM Punk ended the show with, goodbye to John Cena, goodbye to the WWE Championship, and goodbye to CM Punk. CM Punk could destroy the WWE all in one night. He's going to go be the best in the world somewhere else, he said. Yeah. He's sick of John I Cena. I cannot wait to book this on primetime this week. You know what? We may need to do a full Be the Booker only episode because we got a, two Money in the Bank matchups, which are going to require some extensive discussion. Oh, I thought I'm only given 10 minutes. Now you want to go longer? We're, we're working through some things to try to get some extended time. Oh, okay. What a night. You know, it's a lot to absorb, to be honest with you. And uh, we definitely want to hear your comments out there in the world. The number 414-276-ESPN or all over the world, 1-800-990-ESPN. We'll get to your calls in a minute. We've got a caller holding in Georgia, Alabama, and New York City. David Harrell, did John Cena ruin the end of that promo, or was his presence there actually necessary for the moment of realization that CM Punk had He at ruined the end? it the first maybe two minutes because he did that stupid Soup for Cena. Robotic promo he I'm here does. for the people. And all yeah. of a sudden, he sounded very Bostonian. Nobody wants to hear about that, you know? Is John Cena, does he try too hard? Are people yeah, done he following does, He does. It? He, following, he does well, try too it. hard. He is, the promos John Cena cuts are for the little kids. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, and maybe even uh, they. Someone made a point tonight that uh, there was a guy in a John Cena shirt and hat cheering for CM Punk. Boston was firmly behind CM but Punk. But wrestling fan, not all, most wrestling fans today like the cool heel. Well, today or back in 97 well, when Austin oh, 316 was same born. Thing. You know what? Oh, CM Punk is kind of reminding me a little bit of Austin. You know, now that you say that. He is the anti. And what shirt did he wear two weeks ago? Stone Cold. Oh. Hmm. Not saying he is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Not saying he's going to make twenty five million dollars a year like Stone Cold Steve Austin. But he has some some of the same personality traits right now. And this whole thing with Vince, I mean, very reminiscent of the whole rivalry rivalry of Stone Cold and Vince back in that. Vince era. is actually playing a relatively minor role in this whole thing. I think it was great the way they incorporated incorporated him into the story last week and this week. And keep in mind, what they did tonight was pretty revolutionary. I thought it would be a little more serious than it was, but I'm not disappointed by it. The whole live contract negotiation thing, Blah. it was innovative. Uh, We've never seen anything like that. We've seen uh, contract signings. Yes. But which are always did they really the negotiate anything? There was no negotiation going on. Vince had his contract. CM Punk had his version right, of the contract. But they didn't go back and It's forth. just like this whole debt thing. Yeah. They are, they did go back and forth. Mm -hmm. You are too much, Damian Nelson. What do you mean? You don't uh, follow? I, yeah, of course. What I do. are you going to do about your 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 idol Rupert Murdoch? 
He'll be fine. Oh, yeah, he'll be fine. That's for sure. Let's go to the phones and let's go to Antoine down in Georgia on line one. You're live here on the Pro Wrestling Report. Hey, guys. How you guys doing? Fantastic. Your thoughts on Raw tonight, specifically CM Punk? Yes, uh, well, I I was going to get to the CM Punk thing, but I had another question to ask you guys, but we'll go to the CM Punk thing. I think he saved the entire show. It was a great go-home show. And right now, CM Punk is probably the biggest heel slash face right now in the WWE. No doubt he's put um, John Cena on the back burner. He's the biggest star in wrestling right now, hands down. Yep, just like you said, he's the best in the world. You're, you're there, well, right? only because David Hero single-handedly ruined the career of The Miz. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The Miz never had one-sixteenth of this steam nor heat. He had at least a quarter but of it. I don't want to talk about The Miz right now. We're talking about well, you CM brought him up. Punk. Yeah. And, and, and I had a, another question maybe you guys can get to later on. Um, uh, the Randy Orton interview, I'm pretty sure you guys heard it a couple of weeks ago, and they mm-hmm. asked him who was the careless person in the while in the ring, and he mentioned Mark Herring's name. And, and my question is, do you think Mark Herring was supposed to stop tonight, or was he just running too fast? Because it's no telling what Drew McIntyre landed during all that, and I thought Poor it was going to up. He hasn't got hit that hard since his wife smacked him around. Well, <laughs> Antoine, thank you very much for that call from Georgia. Look, there's always these rumors of who's stiff and who doesn't work so well with others in professional wrestling. Uh, Drew McIntyre literally disappeared tonight. Yeah. It's like, Poof. I saw his legs hit the, the light fixtures. Yeah. You know, he took a bump. He did. But, you know, I think that Mark. That 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 landing path was big enough for both those guys. I think he, he was just Henry and Show. Well, yeah, because it shows how vicious Mark Henry is, where he would sacrifice himself to hurt the big show. Now, this doesn't make any sense. So now, are both guys going to come out on Sunday, all bandaged up, all beat up, instead of both? Instead of both? No, guys they're being, giants. They'll be okay. Right, but well, I, I guess Big Show did fall off. What what building was that in Halloween Havoc? Cobo Hall. Yeah, he'll be fine. But, um, uh, yeah, Mark Henry, big show at the pay-per-view in Chicago. Hey, it's points for me. Yeah, you can have, believe me, those are points I don't want to have. Well, speaking of points, I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, a lot of comments on Twitter tonight about CM Punk Linda uh, from the beginning and from the end of WWE Raw. Why don't you share some of that with us uh, from Twitter? All right, going along with what a lot of people are saying about Punk, Greg Branscom says CM Punk is the best thing going in wrestling in a long time. And he also goes on to say that this CM Punk awesomeness could turn into a bunch of great things like a new WWE title belt, GM reveal, end of the PG era. era. That seems like something you guys think could happen. Well, let's keep, it could be, but let's keep this in mind. CM Punk is only as good as his opponent at the same time. So... Does this mean he'll be with? If he does win, will he be? Will he be with John Cena? Does he go to somebody else? I mean, let's not forget that this is the company that likes to cut out the guys from underneath themselves. They've done this to Kofi Kingston, to Dolph Ziggler, to John Morrison, to Sheamus, to Jack Swagger. As soon as someone gets some steam going, they get derailed. What's true though, David Hero? What's true about CM Punk in his time in WWE? Well, no matter. He always continues to get over. He's lost a lot of the big matches. A lot What's of his big... reputation? Well, he's he's a, he's just a jerk. But he gets over that way. He's popular with many in the back, correct or not correct? Some, not all. The important people? Yes. So, if you're seeing... If he punk... wasn't popular with the right people, he would not be in this spot right now. But I think you're forgetting one thing. Well, you're forgetting one very me. important thing. Okay. The desperate desperate state that WWE is in right now. They are desperate. They right. may hate how popular CM Punk is. They may hate that they have to focus on this particular angle. They may hate that they got nobody else. But they might still be going with this because they need their business to turn around, and you can't ignore how popular he so is. So you're saying CM Punk is their messiah right now? Sure. Wow. I'm not sure I am, but, but potentially. Think, but I'm, think about you know, it. I'm just throwing noodles they're, on the wall, bro. They're putting all their eggs in, a, in CM Punk's basket right now. And they're counting their chickens as well, and they haven't hatched yet. No. This could be very interesting. 
Let's go to the phones. <laughs> CJ from Mobile, Alabama. What was the pay per view that always happened in Mobile? Was Mobile? Was it WCW? Hogwild? No, no, no. I'm kidding. Mobile. What was the pay per view? CJ, maybe you can tell us. Hmm. It was in Mobile it's, every year from WCW. Uh, wow. What was it? Was it Mayhem? It wasn't, it, it, I, I think it was Mayhem. It, it, it wasn't fancy. Somebody can fancy. tell us out there in, in the social media world. But I CJ, I, I can't believe you actually care, Damian Nelson. If that was me, Ted, I'd get it, but not you. Who? The, that other guy. CJ, what do you have for us? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to go over and say hello to everyone, Linda K. Everybody, everybody starts with Linda. I tell you, this, that ticks me off. I'm, I'm, a, je- I'm the jealous hey, type. Hey, hey, you got to love Linda K. Got to love Linda K. Well, I do love Linda K. Thank you, CJ. See, you hey. finally come clean on um, it, don't you? Well, gentlemen, I have uh, two basic statements. One, I really want to agree with uh, Lord Damien Nelson over here uh. about the topic at hand, that CM Punk may have thrived and uplifted a, a type of new era. I don't know what to call it. You can't, you can't call it the old uh, attitude era. This is something totally different. Because you, can, because you can see, here it is. You have the top big dog, John Cena. We in John Cena's hometown. And half the crowd is backing everything that CM Punk is stating. This is something that the, that the fans mm-hmm. want so desperately, a change. You can't not always run with a dynasty like John Cena. You can't run with a dynasty like the Yankees. Because at one point, you're going to lose it all. Well, you have to go with change. You know, how do y'all feel about the change? Thank you very much for that call, CJ. Look, Damien loves change. Well, I've got hope that change is always good. Change has been great for me for the last several years. Thank you very much. I gotta go get some hey, new whoa, stickers. Hey, he had a, he had two basic questions, and I'm a, I'm getting ready to answer them. But you oh. you made a point oh, there. I I it was had... just one long one. He had two of them there. Oh, whatever. Attitude error is not coming back. You can't capture, as you say, David Hero. What in a bottle? Lightning. And release it whenever you want. You might get want. a firefly or two, but no lightning. The it was uncensored, by the way. It was the pay per view that was in Mobile, Alabama, for a couple of years. The oh, they, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> they um, the attitude era is not coming back, and this doesn't define a new era in WWE. We're talking three weeks of TV and a pay per view coming up Sunday. This is not in a new a new era. It was a slow burn to the Attitude Era. It was a slow burn to the Hogan Era, which actually was a little more of a of a rocket, if you will. Brother. I don't think you can define where the company's going based off of what's happened with this one story. With I CM know Hulk. exactly how Sunday's going to play out. How? Oh, oh, I get paid for that for Be the Booker. I'm not giving that away tonight. That's the primetime special. I can't give it away. Well, since when do we charge for primetime? Listen, I'll talk about it on primetime, but I know exactly how it's going to pan out. And that'll be Friday, uh, Thursday, rather, right after, after Impact. Impact. And we got a lot to talk about um, for TNA this week. You mean Impact Wrestling? I don't know what the heck they're called. I just told you. Impact Wrestling? No, I, I have a seizure every time I watch that show because I just don't know what to call it. Is it TNA or is oh, it Impact Wrestling? I thought Wrestling? it was you got a seizure because of the production, how the cameras fly over the place. How about some more comments about CM Punk from our Twitter feed, Linda K, since everybody loves Linda. All right. Bosephus Jenkins says, holy crap. Bosephus. Bosephus Jenkins. Excuse me. What did you say, Bosephus? (laughs) Bosephus. Bosephus says. We need to get her into some diversity classes. Punk owns wrestling right away. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why? Why would she need to? Why? Because that's a diverse word. He says, Punk owns wrestling right now. Drew, every day, says, now this is what wrestling is all about. CM Punk, baby. You know, I made this point on the Destination Expo show last night. Do fans really know what wrestling is? No. What is wrestling? Maybe we should do a whole special on that. Because people keep talking about, we love wrestling, we miss wrestling, we want wrestling. Well, what is wrestling? Destination X last night, in, in, in most of its presentation, wasn't wrestling. It was flippity flops. I thought it was flips and flips and backspins. No, no, it was a and... flip into a flip to another flip to a backspin to a, a front flip to an elbow drop. 
Okay. Mm. Yeah. But everyone's definition of wrestling is different. Does anybody, David Hero, does anybody in mass want to see the epic matchups of the late 80s and early 90s in professional wrestling no, what, that we saw? No, the, when they say wrestling, people are thinking Luthez versus Vern Gagne, Vern Gagne really? versus Nick Bockwinkel. Nobody wants that again. Right. Okay? But they do want to see some competitive matchups. They don't want to see two-minute two minute matches on TV. They want to maybe see a seven- to ten-minute match on TV. I think that's what they're missing. Nobody wants to see rest holds and sleepers and, 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 and arm bars and all that kind of stuff. They want to see action. They want to see motion. I think that's what they're talking about. So a lot of people said they were let down last night by the matchup between Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles, which was a great but wrestling you know, match. You know what? That is the wrestling fan's fault, okay? Because they put way too much – their expectations were way too high. They put too much pressure on those two guys. They had a decent match. You know, was it the best one they've ever had? Probably not. But, I mean, they were expecting, you know, the five-star match of the year, the match of the night. And the problem that AJ and Daniels had was they followed those four kids that were fighting for a contract who— You just sat here and called Loki a kid? Well, he's in his early 20s, isn't he? Mid-20s? I believe he's crossed the 30 barrier. Okay, well, then he's your age. But— the, the fact of the matter is, I'm only twenty seven. Those four guys busted their butts, and they gave a hundred and ten percent. And God, I don't care who you are. I don't care if it's Shawn Michaels versus Bret Hart Iron Man match. Which I, who would want to follow that? Nobody. I'm that's surprised a, you actually want to talk to about follow. Destination X after, after those little antics you pulled. You know what? You never. You how can you now? Are, when we talk about Facebook, we say, or iTunes, we say you can listen to it in the bathroom. David Hero, you don't do the show was, from the bathroom. No, no, I was talking to the Pope, and you interrupted me. That was the problem. Okay? Jeez. You know, I got his number and all. This is the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN at ESPNMilwaukee.com. Stop stalking your ex and be our friend on Facebook and join the tremendous worldwide discussion. Facebook.com slash Pro Wrestling Report. Five forty ESPN. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. We're live Monday, July 11, 2011, and Linda, sounds like a lot of people wanted to hear that. Oh, Oops. yeah, it is blowing up right now. Just fell right off her head. <laughs> Everybody wants to hear CM Punk's theme. I'm Not me. A lot of our fans well, you, do, Wait Dave. a minute. No, a fan show. He doesn't understand that. Speaking of contracts. Gonna, can, yes. can I give a shout-out to this, just a few of the names? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, I can't even keep up. There's so many, but that was the request from Eric Jacinto, Julia... Julius Thomas, RJ Casey, Clifton McCoy, Tim Hill, Jorge Ortiz, Brandon Murray, Joy Holston, and there's more. I, just I noticed you didn't pick any other names like uh, Bucephus. Or Jethro. Uh, really? Jeremiah. Really? What? Really? Jethro, wasn't he on the uh, Beverly Hillbillies? I didn't watch that show. No. Well, they don't get hot about it. Let's go to Mike. I'm sorry, Jacob from New York, who's calling us on line three. Jacob, you're live. Yeah, I'm calling from the state that has the best baseball team in the world, the New York Yankees. Hey, I heard a little bit about that tonight. Yeah. Uh, Are they in first place? Yep. How about that? How about Jeter? Yep. Oh, of course. He picks the cute guy. Linda, you're a Yankee fan? I, of course. Yep. I'm an Expos I'm a, fan. Oh, wait. They're no longer there. You know, for of course, I'm a Brewers fan being from Milwaukee, but if we're going to cheer for our American League team, I'm going to go with the Yankees. All right, so... Uh, Anyway. So open ended, Jacob. Yeah, it's all yours, baby. Uh, you call. Um, I just want to say that I never got to see the whole Stone Cold versus Vince McMahon feud back in the nineties because you know I was born like during those years. But not that. I'm whoa, 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 whoa! You were born during those years. How old are you? Hey, you can't ask people that. I can. It's not a contract. I'm sixteen. Oh, 
And you're hitting on Linda? No, no. I'm good. Uh, I, I want to say that I've I've never seen someone grab Vince McMahon from the balls like that, like CM Punk did. He made him his slave. And I know um, Stone Cold did some stuff like that, but did I you say Bullocks on the air? Points, Vince. Until Cena ruined everything once again. You haven't seen it, but many people did it. It started with Bret Hart. Listen, it went to. I remember there is a DVD out there. McMahon. Yes. It's a great DVD, by the way. Watch that. You'll learn a ton. Learn up. Learn up. Learn up. Learn up. Get schooled. Right. Get split now. Thank you very much, Jacob, from New York City, for that call. Look, the it started. You know, what, there's one moment I can't get out of my head, and I think it's vintage video at pwrshow.com. It was Vince McMahon and Bret Hart getting into their first physical encounter in Halifax, Nova Scotia, in July of 2007, I believe it was. When Brett came out and just attacked 2007? Vince. 1997. Vince came out. I'm sorry. Brett came out and just attacked Vince because he had made some screw job match or somebody had made some screw job max match. And it was just that was a wild night on Raw, regardless of anything else happening. But that was really the first time you saw physicality. But the first time people really remember was March 13, 97, when Brett shoved Vince on his tush uh, in the us, ring on Raw music. and said, frustrated isn't the beep beep word for it. This is beep beep. You screwed me. Whoa. Everybody screwed me. Everybody in that beep beep dressing room knows. Runner? And I'm the best there is, the best there is, the best there ever will be. Do you, st- you, do you still think he is the best there is, the best there Never was? Never thought he was. Really? Nope. Who did you think that was? Best there is, was, ever will be? Yeah. That's a debate for another time. Okay. Let's go to Abel calling from down in Chicago on line one. Abel, you're live. Abel. Oh, yes, and everybody here in Chicago is awaiting our Jesus. Messiah. Believe that. CM Punk? <laughs> oh, of course, the one and only. You're going to be yeah, at Money in the Bank this Sunday, Abel? No, even, I don't even top that. I'm willing to pay for a pay-per-view for a change. And as much as you'd like to say that not paying for it is a federal offense, so is watching a Cody Rhodes match. So. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, tremendous. See? You hurt my feelings. I don't. Yeah, Linda's hot. She oh, is. Linda, Have you seen her tonight? Yeah, I'm, all I know is I just can't wait for this Sunday. But we're, okay, you're going to order it's, the pay-per-view but not uh, make the trek to that lovely facility, the Allstate Arena? It's sold out the moment they said CM Punk main event. You know that. <laughs> well, but there's, here's, here's the thing. Uh, it is right. finally a fresh of breath air to talk about Raw and be happy about it for a change. Yeah. Is it not? Whether it be whether or not they're going to take the floor out of you know CM Punk while he while the while the good while the good is getting good, or or not, it was great to see CM Punk get his push to see Alberto Del Rio standing there even though it was a horrible pink shirt but still standing there holding the ladder, and I'm real mistaken, men wear I pink. Think, if I'm not mistaken, I think Miz was the last one to eat that one too. All right, well, Abel, thank you very much for calling from down in Chicago and enjoy this Chicago. Sunday's Money in the Bank on pay per view. What? Nothing. He was done. I heard a period. I d- I did too. It's fine. Hey, you know what? You do what you got to do. See how touchy you are about your guys. I don't understand what you're talking about. I don't hear the words that it's are coming a- out of your mouth. It's amazing how a month later it was Ron Killings, Our Truth, and John Cena. Nobody cared. A month later, now it's the hottest ticket in pay per view land. How long will it last? Sunday. Really? Sure. You're done. What do you mean I'm done? Sunday, you think this is done? Cena wins, Punk leaves. We go back to I'm not going to talk old. about it until prime really. Time. You're doing this, really? Yes. Not as brave as me, I see. I'm just trying to promote the other brand. But hey, go ahead, give all your stuff for free. Four one four two seven six ESPN. Four one four two seven six three seven seven six. Eight hundred nine ninety ESPN. Eight hundred nine ninety three seven seven six. A spectacular Raw tonight. And uh, a couple a more comments. Stop. It was not spectacular until the last 30 minutes. You didn't. The first 30 minutes were equally spectacular, I thought. Okay. Well, that's your opinion. Okay, well, speaking of the closing of Raw on Facebook here, we have Sean Hill saying that was an outstanding close to Raw tonight. Could we see the Chicago screw job this Sunday night? Let and- me say this. It, that Chicago crowd, you know, I think there are three main venues for WWE in this country. Madison Square Garden. Um, I would say that uh, the um, the Allstate Arena in Chicago and, um, well, it could vary Staples. from Staples Center to somewhere in Texas, whatever that might be. But this is going to be intense on Sunday. I mean, 
this is a hot angle involving CM Punk. Chicago fans are very loyal. By the way, the Yankees are not in first place. Uh huh. See, Chicago fans are very loyal, and they already hate John Cena. Oh, here's something that's interesting as well from Nick Snipes saying maybe Vince and Punk screw Cena in Chicago. One thing for sure, and usually Chicago pay per views mean history in the making. Well, let's not forget they've been trying to find the right what do you call it recipe, mm-hmm. the right formula. Form that's the word I'm looking for. Formula to turn John Cena heel. What better way to really? do it? Oh, really? Yeah. They kind of planted that seed tonight a little bit. All the money they make off of him. We'll see. Children don't like heels. That's fine. You said it earlier. Yeah, but I saw kids in the crowd tonight chanting CM Punk. You saw them chanting CM Punk? Absolutely. I saw their mouths moving. Destination X was last night on pay-per-view. We're going to talk about that in the second hour, along with a couple of uh, talent changes in TNA Wrestling. And where is Impact going? Well, it might be coming near you. Details on that in the second hour of the Pro Wrestling Report. Linda Kay, a couple more comments out there about uh, CM Punk and Raw tonight overall. Sounds like a very favorable rating from the social media universe, if you will, including WWE claiming that all the discussion about CM Punk broke Twitter. Oh, yeah. Well, another thing was about you guys mentioned before about the the kids chanting for us. The children? The children. Children's. Children's. Chanting for punk. Colton Ashley says, loved how the fans turned on Cena, again, in Boston, and chanted, for CM Punk. I mean, just shows a lot of, again, how emotionally invested everybody is getting. And just, I don't know, if, if Cena does turn heel, I mean, I, I, I'd i actually be, be pretty excited for that. I am a Cena fan, but well, you also I'd like, like the to. bad boys too, don't you, Linda? Yes, I do. Uh huh. As much as I didn't ever think Randy Orton could be a good guy, a face, if you will, I even more so don't see how John Cena could be a heel. Now, can he play that role? Absolutely. First of all, Number one. It may not be what John Cena or Vince McMahon wants, but that's kind of how it's shaping up to be. The fans want to see someone stand up to Vince McMahon, but not do it in the funny haha DX way. They want a man to stand up to Vince McMahon, not, not a bunch of practical jokers. And CM Punk's that man. And CM Punk is that man. And let's face it, John Cena never has stood up to Vince McMahon on Raw. Uh, not, not the way, in the CM, way CM Punk, Punk did. Yes. yes, you're exactly right. Well, so much more to talk about. We'll take more of your phone calls, including Michigan, Iowa, and San Antonio, Texas. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. Repeat, repeat. You know what? Why do you gotta hate? I'm us? bobbing repeat, my head. Repeat, repeat. Yes, you are. I see <laughs> Linda bobbing. Around. Repeat, repeat. I'm That's sorry. How rumors start. Oh. <laughs> what? What? Nothing. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPN Milwaukee.com. Linda, how was Summerfest? It you was were there 11 of the 11 days, weren't you? Just about. Every how do you do time. it? Uh, it's full of energy. You were. Were you well behaved? Maybe. I wasn't able to join you each day. You know. No. Oh. Plead the fifth. Okay, thank you, Ryan Smith. You brought a fifth in with you? What? What? You brought a fifth in with you? Thank you, Ryan Smith, (laughs) for choosing that NWO Wolfpack song. I love it. Repeat, repeat. Oh, let me guess. You'd rather hear Jimmy Wang Yang again, huh? Repeat, repeat. Brutal. That's a jam. Repeat, repeat. It's like the percolator. It's as great a song as that was. Time for the percolator. percolator. (laughs) Repeat, repeat. Okay. Let's go to the phones, and I believe waiting next is Mike from Iowa on line two. Mike, you're live. What's up, guys? Hey, Mike. Keith Tezik. What's that? His name is Mike. How you doing, amigo? Good, man. Just, I'm Raw night. Seeing the end of Raw. Sorry, I'm stuttering, but seeing the end of Raw, just as good as it was, the epic promo, the minute it happened, I had to go on to Ticketmaster and know this pay-per-view is not sold out. 
But I went on Ticketmaster, got my ticket, and I'm going up Sunday. Chicago's only three hours away. I just got to go. And isn't that, Mike, what it's all about? And did CM Punk do what he said he was doing tonight, which is talk you, Mike, from Iowa into Chicago's All-State Arena for this Sunday's pay-per-view? Pretty much. I mean, he just pre- he spoke uh, some of the some over the last couple weeks. He spoke some of the truth about some fans, the way some fans are. You know, the the people that have stuff signed and sell it on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> if Cena wins, do you riot? Pretty much. I mean, oh, if he wins. it's illegal, right? All I you can know? say is, David Hero better not book Cena to win because. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, we need. We need it. Well, I, what I if think... I DWHS it? That could be. Well, epic. then, uh, dang, uh, uh-uh. no, that would be a mistake right there. You know what I think we should do? We should ask our resident Mike. Thank you very much for that call. Our resident John Cena fan, intern Brian. Oh boy. Our resident John Cena fan, aside from Linda, even though she's been coached through her her challenges with that. Huh. I want to know. The chances, hello, intern Brian. Hello, how you doing? I'm fantastic. The chances, I'm surprised you're not wearing your Cena shirt this week, by the I way. I was going to wear it. Scotty Too Hotty had some interesting things to say about that last week. <laughs> Did he? Always. Your, the chances of your guy winning on Sunday, John Cena, what do you think? Yay or nay, John Cena walks out of the All-State Arena with the championship? No. Whoa, you hear that? A John Cena mark, a hardcore Cena fan, does not think his man has a chance to win. No, I like I want him to win, but I think the whole hype with CM Punk and I think that CM Punk's going to win and take the title. I think there's I just it. too much hype, and I agree with what you were saying. How um, like you always think someone's going to overtake Zena, and he always wins, but I think this is the one time that CM Punk is going to overtake Zena. Intern Brian, thank you very much. Now I hope your heart's not broken because John Cena's going to lose. Already, uh, I've uh, you come yeah. to grips with that. Yeah, fact. It'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you. They have duct tape for that now. Listen, imagine how many t shirts they would sell if John Cena turns heel and screws CM Punk. They'd sell a ton of CM Punk t shirts, but that's the greatness of it. This can go in so many different directions. It's the writing's not on the wall. I just told you what's going to happen. Oh, great. Now I, you've already got to figure out how you're going to explain why it didn't happen that way when it doesn't. <laughs> Man. You got this. You're sitting here with this little your little fancy shirt on, your little moose in your hair. You got a little super friend shirt, which, you know, it's a wonder that's a big circle on the front because that's the circle that you walk around and talk around on this show every and week. It's, and it works, too. I'd like to go to Texas. I'm sure you would. San Antonio, specifically. On the Riverwalk. Line three, Justin, you're live. Yes. Hello, Justin. Uh, well, I'm basically like coming tonight, like just how everybody's coming on CM Punk. Um, WWE, they should take a template with this particular storyline and use this particular template, you know, just to like build up their storylines this way. You have one heel, one face, viewing over the title, then you have some stuff going between. And you have the fans emotionally invested in it. That's basically what wrestling is. And, you know, at times at WWE, they never really, you know, do that. You know, they'll make some silly storyline. But with this particular storyline, you know, it has the fans emotionally invested. And, you know, for me, you know, I haven't bought a pay-per-view in, you know, since probably 2007. You know, I I find other ways of watching pay-per-view. Resourceful. Creative. You know, tonight uh, tonight made me realize I have to actually order this pay-per-view and watch it, you know, at my home. You know, because CM Punk, you know, as everybody's saying, you know, he talked uh, everybody into the building. Well, he talked me into buying this pay-per-view on Sunday because, you know, CM Punk, he's a great talent. And, you know, I think he will walk out with the title, um, but I think there's going to be some shenanigans that's going to happen as well, so... All right, Justin, thank you very much for calling. Here's the thing. It's not even just Punk Cena. You've got two great money in the bank matchups also where two people will get the opportunity to win a championship opportunity. And let's not forget, last year, Kane beat Rey Mysterio and took his title right off of him after he lost his or won his match. The same could happen Sunday night at 
money in the bank, maybe, and just throwing this out there, maybe El Mizanin leaves money in the bank again, WWE champion. He's David an Harrell, a, he's an afterthought. You, and you, but you've said many a time. Guess who they're not focusing on? Guess who they're not talking about? Hmm, I wonder why. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying it's yet another scenario. Hell, Cody Rhodes could become WWE champion Sunday then night. We will riot in Chicago. Dolph Ziggler could become W. Alberto Del Rio could become. WWE champion this Sunday. But you already knew that. He's the guy. He's the guy. I was going to bring this up earlier. There's been a lot of comments on Facebook about Punk winning or who who knows, maybe even Cena winning. I don't know. And then the Money in the Bank winner, either one coming in and cashing it in. So that would be really interesting. That's what makes this pay-per-view so interesting. Absolutely. So much can happen. Anything can happen. And that's what's great. As far as making a template of this story and using more, I sort of understand where the caller was coming from. But But at the same time, no, you can't do that. Uh, And here's the other thing. There is no true heel in this program because the fans are behind CM Punk and the fans are behind John Cena. As much as he's tried to get them from behind him. CM Punk, that is. Yes, but the fans like it when someone defies authority, whether it had been Austin, whether it had been DX, now it's CM Punk. Even The Rock when he came out with The Nation. We are the nation. Punk, that better not be the next song. I'm I telling you right now. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I, I, see I can't it. believe you're sitting in here bullying Linda like that. No, you. You got I'm, your I'm fist looking, raised I'm looking, looking at her. Right at you. I don't pick the music. The fans pick Damn the music, man. and Linda's the social media diva. I see you whispering things in her ear all the time. Stop arguing with me. That's not about the music. Please don't stop the music, Linda. That's our Rihanna song. Yes, Who? it is. That, that's our Guess next song. Guess we're not going to play that's, that one. You heard her new song? I don't know if you guys got no. this. It was an early release. Her new song? What? What is it? It's called Faceplant. Of course. This is the award-winning pro wrestling report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. They know their way around the wrestling ring, but certainly not a whole hell of a lot about being in it. This is the Pro Wrestling Report Radio. 540 ESPN. This man could be the winner of Money in the Bank this Sunday on pay-per-view. He could become a WWE World Heavyweight Champion down the road. He is my next big thing, so let's see. Thank you. Got and about him- five more months ticking on that one. What? You got about five more months on that one for something to happen. Yeah. Who was your next big thing, David Hero? Alberto Del Rio. Yeah. And he's a former world champion, right? Yes. Who was my next big thing to Miz? He had line WrestleMania, didn't he? Yes. Thank you. And thank you, Ad Himar Espinal, for choosing. Who? Mr. Espinal choosing. Oh, get up again, tell me. I want to hear more. No. Really? They got the video of you in the shower. Holy crap. Whoa, who's the other guy with you? Yeah, that's great. See, see what you guys what start. <laughs> I didn't start anything. Brutal. Cody in the shower with somebody. Let's go to Daryl in Grand Rapids, Michigan. You're live were on you live one. Your, was, were you pointing at yourself, Linda? That was you with him in the shower? Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Daryl, you're live. Thank hey, you. Daryl, here's your chance to become a super friend right now. Something amazing. Go ahead. Hey, you got demolition working for you, so I'm already in. <laughs> here comes the axe, and here comes the smasher. There you go. That's all but, I need. But, oh, yeah, those are my boys. But, uh, you know, watching this whole CM Punk thing, uh, it's interesting to me because uh, what they've done with the whole thing is they've basically just taken everything that everybody's uh, typed and uh, said online or uh, on any other talk show 
and they're actually using it in the storyline for a change. They're actually taking what everybody's been griping about, complaining about, and they're using it and they're running with it. And if they don't overbook it, they can make a lot of money with it. You know, WWE has not been an early adopter. And what I mean by that, and thank you for that call, Daryl, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all that stuff they let grow way beyond them before they got on board. Meaning they also weren't paying attention to the influence that these social media channels has on their product. Now that they fully embrace those things, I think that they are also embracing some of the feedback that they see and that they get. The question is, where does that feedback go? And generally, when you have a company like WWE, the size of WWE, you've got somebody sitting in an office preparing what's called let's media clips. And every day, the executives of the company get what has been published about that company, including things on social media channels. Are they reading it? Are they seeing it? Is that happening? Don't know. But you, you can. it's easy to assume that the stuff that's being said is leading to these things being said on WWE TV and programming. But at the same time, I wouldn't expect anything anybody's saying out there on any social media channels to change at its core what WWE is doing. Thank you very much for that call. You know, Damian Nelson... Yes, David Hero. We will get blasted every week that we don't talk about TNA. We're getting ready to. No, but no, but here's our You're point. You're making a point. They had a pay-per-view. Destination X. Last night that so many of the quote-unquote wrestling fans said it would be the best pay-per-view of all time. Right? Because mm-hmm. it has all their favorites on it. Mm-hmm. All the backflips and all that fun stuff. And how many calls have we had about it tonight? Uh, there was maybe uh, one. Then there were, yeah, none. So I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to read the comments. I don't want the tweets. I don't want the emails. I don't want the Facebook mentions. Why didn't you talk about TNA? Well, we spent forty five minutes on it on the post show last night. But, I'm sorry, I spent yeah, forty five minutes on the post show. I last was busy. Night. I, I had business. Clearly, to take you care were of. busy, and clearly so, you were taking care of business. With all that being said, and there's usually a lot more being said than done, we have. No interest from the fans to talk about TNA Destination X. We're going to, though. Well, we will, but I'm just saying we Your are now... Your point is very valid. We are now an hour and 25 minutes into the Who show. Who uses that clock? I do. That's fascinating to me. Well, I'm just saying. I, listen, it's right behind Linda, so this way I get a chance to look over by Linda and I see the clock. The what? The clock. Let's go to, and stay on the phone lines, and let's go to Sean, who is calling from here in the MKE. Let me guess. It's about CM Punk. Sean, you're live. You know it. This is the Sean Lowe, prime time. Oh, my gosh. What's going on, people? A whole bunch of nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, here's the thing on the CM Punk angle, which no one has talked about yet. What if Daniel Bryan won the Money in the Bank match? Is he in it? Yes, on the SmackDown brand. Right. So that condescending tone towards me. It wasn't. I was being real. Well, he, Alberto can come down and try to cash it in. Daniel Bryan could come down with his briefcase, knock Alberto out. CM Punk leaves with the title and leaves with Daniel Bryan with the money in the bank. Oh, they're not going to invest that into Daniel Bryan. Punk is a standalone guy right now. They got Tyler Black under contract. It would all make sense if they did that ROH angle like that. CM Punk could not have walked into WWE and done what he's doing now. The people, the other people you mentioned, I don't think they have the the interest or the tenure, if you will, in World Wrestling Entertainment to be as valuable as CM Punk. And David Hero, I would agree with you. He doesn't need any hang-ons. He's had them, and they got rid of all of them. Uh-huh. Joy Mercury I, gone, Luke Gallows gone, Serena Deeb gone. Right, but if CM Punk's on the sidelines, if he wants time off for a month or two, they could have Daniel Bryan at least lead a stable with that Money in the Bank briefcase. But but you're CM going Punk off the back. fact that, that they are going to introduce Ring of Honor as a viable entity on not, Raw. Well, not call it Ring of Honor, of course, but, you know, have mm-hmm. a stable of guys that would come in that already signed under contract. I, I think it would work. Well, Sean Lowe, thank you very much for calling in being a part of the show. Everybody's got an idea. But I got, but I got the right one. That we hmm. have to wait prime until time. prime time. Prime time. Be the booker. Oh, my it's gosh. It's going to be Thursday. Uh, available I, I, on look, demand look, look, at PWRShow.com. I've been taking notes the whole show. 
I know exactly how this is going to pan out. <clears throat> Who's next? Let's go to Adam calling from Columbus on line one. Adam, you're live. Hey, guys. How's Milwaukee tonight? Tremendous. Ah. Well, I'll continue the theme tonight and uh, continue to talk about CM Punk. Well, of course. Hey, it's the hottest thing in professional wrestling right now. And hey, I agree. I All I'm saying is I don't want to hear. We didn't talk about TNA. This is a show for the fans. It's a fans show by the fans for the fans. The whole thing about the fans. But there has been no fan Except interest. Except for the themes. There's been no fan interest about TNA. So go ahead on. Let's keep rolling with CM Punk. It's the CM Punk show tonight. And we could all speculate. You know, for days on how this CM Punk thing is going. But this is truly the first time since the early 2000s that I have really enjoyed professional wrestling as a fan. And it means a lot to me that they've invested what they have into this because I'm enjoying the hell out of it. And I think a lot of fans all over the world are enjoying the heck out of this as well. You know, it, 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 it's ignited the business. And as we said a couple of weeks ago, thank you to not only CM Punk, but to WWE for igniting the business. Because without this, we'd, we'd be, talking be going about into another... Next right now. <laughs> we'd be going into another almost like an R-Truth John Cena main event kind of thing. And, and remember sitting through that at Capital Punishment. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That was the longest. Do you think Blago's going to make an appearance on Sunday? Rod Blagojevich? Yeah. Well, I mean, they had, they had Obama He's... at the last pay-per-view. Why not have Blago at this one? That wasn't him, Dave. Really? Really. Huh. He's on the poster. That was a caricature. Hmm. Did I get five points for that? John in Philadelphia, you're live here on the... Actually, we're going to go to John in a minute. What is all this... Tell me, what, what, what's going on? Who are you talking to? Why are you having an extended conversation in there? Oh, you got, boy. You got intern Brian helping you, and you can't. Linda, could you go give Tillman a hand for a minute? Uh, just with the phones. <laughs> I Actually, I have uh, something to read here. Oh, my goodness. Um, it, wait, I didn't know you had a tattoo. Yes, I do. I have a few, actually. Oh, a few? You spelled it right. D-A-M-E-O-N. Damien? <laughs> well, hold on. Who's Eon? Is Cena supposed to be going for something? Because I have a comment here. People think, think he's doing a movie. I can't find any proof of that, though. Because there's a question for you, Mr. Hero, here. It's saying, could this whole punk thing be a storyline leading to Triple H coming back full-time and being <laughs> with punk? It's all about the game. Or the title while Cena is gone? Well, he did mention the doofus a few weeks ago. And tonight. Tonight. Re- referring oh, you know? to the chaperone. He also, yeah, you caught those comments about the chaperone, too. Yeah. About how to be- you never know. I mean... Oh, boy, to go from Taker to then the few with Punk, I wouldn't want to be in a Punk's shoes because right. Triple H isn't going to lay down for Punk. Right. Huh. Wouldn't that be something, though, if Triple H does show up in Chicago? Oh, he'll be there. I better put that down in my notes for be the I'm player. supposed to stop by his bus. Did you get that invite as well? Yes, but I'm not going to be going. There's food there. That's fine, but do you really want to be around Triple H and Stephanie and all them? Oh, we go way back. It's fine. Yeah, the way you bury them. This is the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and com. 540 ESPN. Do you think Stone Coats got the idea for the smoking skull belt from Papa Shango? You know, he used to carry that skull to the ring p- smoking. This is Papa Shango's theme song? Pimpin' ain't pimpin' ain't easy, y'all. Oh my god! Yeah, and, and please, I like these flashbacks. Please, tell me who picked theme. this song. Nadim Deem Dash. Tonight's show is brought to you by Kleenex. <laughs> Thank you for uh, you know what? I I like these throwback themes. I was thinking earlier today about remember when we talked about Akeem, what that did for the show. <laughs> yeah, made it very entertaining. EPO. <sighs> What TNA I, Destination X was last night on pay-per-view, David Hero. We did ask, we did ask all of our Facebook users 
to vote pass or fail on the show. And if you want to hear all about TNA Destination X, we did do a 45-minute post show. Yes, we did. On that I did. You know, I still, you you know you've, you've been fined. Fine, fine, fine you. Okay. You've been fined. You don't do what you did last night. Amigo. No, I, 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 we can't even talk about it. That's all that can be said. The post show available on all of our media channels, including PWRShow.com, about last night's TNA Destination X. But one thing we were left with at the end of that broadcast was really not knowing whether you liked it or hated it. So we asked you on Facebook, pass or fail for TNA Destination X. 80% of you said it was a passing show. That's Two matches stood out. The four-way match, which saw Austin Aries get a TNA contract. And I will say this. Austin Aries, you know, he's, he's from Milwaukee. And we, 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 I've seen him a bunch of times DMKE. locally around here. Damn, he looked really good the last few weeks on TV. Everything looked sharp. It looked good. You know, crisp, calculated. He's really impressed me. And you know what? He's not too bad on the mic either. He gets it. But you weren't streaming last night, were you? No, no, no. Cal pressed the buy and record now button. You going to have a password on there? No, I said forget what it is. And I was like, and then, of course, he leaves. Well, like three quarters after through. the four-way match, I'm sure. Uh, I didn't even get that far, I think. I'm like, really? New X Division champion and B, <clears throat> former the Brian Kendrick. And you know what? I heard he had a big party at Ed DeBevick's afterwards. I heard he got a little upset at the party. Yeah, he liked it when the waiter threw the straws at him. Mm. He got all hot about it. Time to go? Time to go. Well, I thought it was a good pay-per-view overall. However, I did, You're David, here. liar. The Ultimate X match, disappointing. RVD and Jerry Lynn, five years too late. Uh, ten years too late. Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles, a great wrestling match. But Jerry didn't meet Lynn the expectations that they hard, set for themselves. Not harder than most of the other guys on the show last night. He can still go. Absolutely he can, but I didn't care. What I mean by that is, unlike what everybody's been talking about tonight, CM Punk, mm-hmm. John Cena, Vince McMahon, Money in the Bank, emotional investment, I had none. I felt like I've seen that match a hundred times already. And you have. Right. You know what's funny? I saw one of your tweets that said that you're fast forward. You were out of fast forward last night. I was out night. of fast forward. That was a disappointing moment. You know. And that was during that the was Gen Me funny. and uh, Eric Young and Shark Boy match. The f- Gen Me. Actually, no. It was, Gen it was Me. With, uh, the, uh, Doug Williams and Mark Haskins. I think Gen Mark Me. Mark Haskins. I think Gen Me got tired of their uh, hot dog payoffs. They've asked for their release from TNA Wrestling, and it seems like that release has been granted it was as of granted. last night. Yes. Hot dog payoffs. Whoa, yeah. whoa. I'm not Mustard or ketchup? It. Relish. No mayo. None. Listen, you're the one who's called them Hardy's Light. Hardy's Light, for absolutely. Years, and that's L I T E, not L I T E. for a year. <clears throat> Are they going to be missed? No. They asked for their release. They're going to Ring of Honor. That's where, that's where they started. They'll, they'll be bigger stars in Ring of Honor Absolutely. than they ever will be in TNA. Absolutely. Another one released. Not just for breakfast anymore. OJ, Orlando Jordan. Shocking. Really? Yeah, I thought he'd be Did a Did he lifer. last the longest of the Hogan tagalongs? Um, there was the Nasty Boys. There was him. There was Val Venus. Jimmy Hart. I think he might might have been the last man standing. He might have been. He had a good run. He had that hot tag. Uh, I love tag teaming t-shirt out with Eric Young. EY? Yeah. That guy is freaking talented and underused. EY? Yes. Eric Young. How about Shark Boy last night on Destination X? Oh, yeah. shell, yeah. The minute he stops talking, I stop caring. You know what's funny? And... I, I like Shark Boy, but okay, as a character, as a but, person, the whole thing. Look at all the other X Division guys they didn't use, but they used Shark Boy. Right, they didn't bring back Davari, they didn't bring back Jay Lethal, but PD Williams, PD Williams, but they bring back Shark Boy. <sighs> well, what's next? I want you to close this Hardcore up with justice. what's next. Obviously, that is the next pay-per-view from TNA Wrestling, where there will be a world championship match, by the way. Yes, there will be. Kurt Angle, the number one contender. 
What's next, though? Next division. Ooh, ooh, ooh it's back. Flips and flips and I forget flips. how they go. Yeah, It's back. It's great. Oh, it's X division. It's what we all wanted. It's what made TNA what it was. Everybody six wanted steel, it, or six but ring, nobody six has called in to back. talk about it. Phone lines have been full all night. Maybe they couldn't get through. No, well, but listen. With I'm all listening. the calls we've taken. That's what I do with these headsets. With all the calls we've taken. A lot. Yeah. So, like I said, I don't want to hear about it. I you don't, just don't want to talk about it. I'll talk about whatever. That's fine. But I just don't want people to complain. You didn't talk about TNA again. Well, it's because nobody called to talk about it. Well, let's see what our next callers have to say. And uh, let's go to John in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. John, you're live. Yay. Uh, first of all, I do want to second CM Punk's opinion that WWE should bring back the ice cream bars because they were awesome. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yes. They were amazing. Were you able to get those off the ice cream truck when it came to your name? Stop. Children present. Um, yeah, the uh, X Division pay per view. That was all right. It wasn't. Uh, <laughs> You're forcing right. yourself, John, to talk about it. it was, yeah, it was all right. It wasn't, you know, not because I'm trying to appease uh, uh, David Hero over there. Don't even bother. Oh, I did you him. order it or did you watch it online somewhere? Uh, I'm not going to answer that for well, there, federal offense. See, there you go. Exactly. I'm not going to answer that for legal reasons. But uh, <laughs> plead the fifth. I am. Yeah, yeah I plead the fifth. But I am going to plead the fifth every Saturday night. I am going to plead uh, second. The uh, opinion. I forget who said it, but yeah. The, four the right match, to bear arms? Yeah. The four-way match was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was that was the highlight of that pay-per-view, in my opinion. Absolutely. Um, Austin Aries, like Hero said, just looked incredible. So did Jack Evans. Jack Evans was really, I mean, impressive. Yeah. As he um, always has been, by the way. And it's a shame that more yeah. people haven't been exposed to him. But, David Hero, you make a great point about Jack Evans. Yeah, Jack Ooh. Evans is not the guy you're going to put on the cover of a video game or a magazine. You know, Austin Aries, you can, but Jack Evans isn't. Um, how do you, what, what's the word, Linda? Help poster me ready? Appearance wise, ready. Yeah, poster ready. But it's, it was still a good match. And uh, so, yeah, now I have to talk about CM Punk. <laughs> I just, like I said, I wanted to appease David Hero. Thank you, and, um, and I appreciate it. No problem. Anytime, buddy. Um, I've seen CM Punk since the se- since Second City Saints days. And. I fell in love with the guy. I mean, his promo work, far none, one of the best I've ever seen. And I've watched wrestling for years. Um, his solo promos, his on-the-mic promo, amazing stuff. And when he finally started talking about just, like, kind of chipping away at the reality of things and how John Cena is, you know, this untouchable, you know, superhero. Super you know, Cena! That everybody, you know, this, like he said, just the idea that he's the best is complete and utter garbage. And I'm finally, I'm so glad. And I, somebody did this before to see, I think it was Batista. Yeah, earlier this year. Said the same, almost the same exact thing that you, you know, Cena is the face because he is the cheesy superhero Hulk Hogan wannabe. And I'm glad that, that CM Punk actually spoke up. You know, it's a it's a relief. It's fresh air that a lot of guys like me who love wrestling, who have watched wrestling since childhood, yeah. finally want to see this anti-hero persona come back, you know, and dominate. So well, we'll it. see. We'll see what happens this Sunday at Money in the Bank. John from Philadelphia, thank you very much for calling. You know what? He brings up an interesting point. If this was Hulk Hogan. In the eighties, would would they allow a character like a CM Punk to call it Hulk Hogan like that? Hmm. I mean, if you want, who came closest? Was it Mister Perfect? No, I mean maybe Piper. I don't know if the words. So, is it safe to say Piper or CM Punk is the Piper of our generation right now? The guy who can lose but doesn't lose his theme, or the Jericho. No. Jericho didn't win many matches on his way out, but maintained that oh, amazing. Oh, who's to say Punk's on his way out? Okay. Jake the Snake Roberts? 
Mm. I liken it closer to that. Really? But Jake the Snake was never in a main event run with Hulk Hogan. Mm. I mean, I'm not yeah. I'm not saying that Piper and Punk are the same, but there are some similarities there. People, you know, they're great talkers, they're great heels. And then Piper also eventually became a babyface. Got a hot date tonight, Linda? What? Chala. Yeah, about Piper. Okay. Uh, okay. Take a time out. We'll be coming back. News on how you might be able to see Impact Wrestling live in your area. This is the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com. It's time for the Superhero Song of the Week on the Pro Wrestling Report here on ESPN Radio. This is not the song. Oh, it's the song. This Dude, is, this is not great. the superhero what a pick. song of this the week. This is your best superhero pick of I the week. I did not pick this. I love this. Are you sure? Luke K. Johnny K. Katana. Wow, you guys absolutely oh, yeah. suck to me, don't you? You know, I don't ask for much. I ask for one thing a week, and I can't This is a like great that. song. Yeah. This is old school. This is, this is when things were great. WrestleMania 12, Iron Man, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. What is this song the called? The formation of the NWO. This is Mortal Kombat! It's a theme song for the Mortal Kombat oh, motion picture. So this is in, from the game Street Fighter? Get out. <laughs> get, get out. What are you talking about? This is from the game Mortal Kombat. Oh, I never played that game. Flawless victory. <laughs> this, I never... I, I have no idea what game this is. I never played it. Did you ever upgrade from Sega Genesis? Absolutely. Atari 2600. 4800 were for the cool kids. Oh. And then the 9600, nobody bought. Welcome back to the award-winning Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPNWalkie.com. In the home stretch. <sighs> What's wrong with you? Nothing. That was a good pick. You shouldn't have brought it up during the break. Uh, whatever. I didn't bring it Tillman got confused. He thought you wanted to hear Shocking. the song. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> He's gonna. He's, Mama said, "Knock you out." He's been messing with my headphones the whole night. We've got now. two people waiting on hold who have been doing so patience, patiently. Let's go out to New Jersey. Carrie, you're live on line three. You guys are really good at what you do, and I really appreciate uh, being able to listen to the show. Thank you so much. A couple of days. Now I have a lot to say, so let me get right to it. I've been noticing a lot of differences between the brands. Um, I noticed the other day. I saw something online that there was a problem with CM Punk in Australia where he said some sort of slur, uh, some sort of homophobic slur. Now, uh, in, in TNA Impact a few months back, uh, Bubba Ray Dudley was in the match with uh, AJ Styles when he put him through the stage or whatever, and there was a slur on air that came through, and nobody said a word. Now, CM Punk was forced. Nobody saw it. Either by by WWE or what to have to put on Twitter that he apologized, and TMZ actually uh, put it out there. Um, and you know, just this Price is Right thing. You know, wrestlers from TNA are on Price is Right as contestants, whereas divas from WWE are presenting showcases. You know what I mean? And and it's a it's an issue because. For a wrestling fan, because I feel like a lot of the in ring action is better in TNA than it is in WWE. However, the difference in company is so huge. And, um, you know, pay per view buy rates are down, obviously, because they're just too expensive for people to, to in this economy to spend $70 on wrestling a month and UFC and everything else. What do you think about? Um, the possibility of TNA doing like a, one or two cheaper pay per views a year to get somebody who may not have forty or fifty dollars to spend on a pay per view. But here's here's the thing, Gary, and we appreciate your points, which are valid. They're not going to spend thirty five. They're not going to spend forty five. They're not going to spend twenty five. They're not going to spend fifteen. 
is you got the opportunity to check out those Ring of Honor pay-per-views for what I believe to be only $15. Uh, so so the product is out there if, if you want it. TNA first offered weekly pay-per-views for 10 bucks, but tick, 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 it adds up. 45 bucks for WWE, 35 bucks for TNA. Maybe you want to go see a movie. It's you another 50 bucks. Here is the secret to TNA's success. Ooh, Michael J. Fox. I'm going to give it away for free. How about that? Have the blast areas. You know, you can go to BW3. Will you, you stop Hoos. thinking outside the box? You can go box. to Roll Mines on South 27th this Sunday and watch the Money in the Bank for free on pay-per-view. How dare you have revolutionary thoughts about but that? Why don't they? TNA does not offer sports bars and other establishments the opportunity to purchase their pay-per-views. They do, but they charge as much as no, WWE No, they does. don't. It's not available for purchase. It's now off the board. Hmm. And if TNA would have a blast area where a family can, you know, can go and, you know, order some food at a restaurant and watch it on the big screens, they might get some more fans. But the fans aren't going to roll the dice on $35 when they know that there's a money in the bank pay-per-view a week later for $45. And then there's a good chance there's going to be a UFC pay-per-view two weeks later for 55 There's too much out there. There is a lot out there, and uh, TNA, well, yeah, we, we spent too much time uh, as fans, I think, talking about what's broken, but we spent a lot of time today talking about what's getting fixed, and that is the level in, of interest in world wrestling entertainment. But what could pique the interest for TNA wrestling is going back on the road with Impact Wrestling, which is going to happen come next month, David Hero, Huntsville, Alabama, on August 25th, and we taped a few weeks of TV there. Then moving on to Knoxville, Tennessee on September 21st. Going to be taking, taping a couple of weeks of TV there. And finally, in Macon, Georgia. Wow, they're hitting some big markets, aren't they? On October 26th. But isn't this smart, David Hero? No, it's not. you got to go to a city that has at least a million people there. Why would you do that? Because there's more people to pull from. Really? Why go to a, a podunk town with 25,000 people? Maybe they feel better about that particular venue. Uh, Maybe they feel no. better about you know their what ability it is? to draw. It's a cheaper building to rent. Is that the way they should be doing business? No. you got to go to the big metropolises where you can should get... Should they go to the Bradley Center here in Milwaukee? Oh, they can't get in the Bradley... Should they go to the U.S. They go to the Arena? Mecca. Hell, go to the GLCW Dome in Waukesha. That's fine, too. Rave? There's a bunch of spots they could go to, but they don't do it. They don't roll the dice on... They'll roll the dice on a bigger building for a pay-per-view, like the Sears building in Chicago. Which still is a bad building to Which run. is one of the most expensive buildings to run in the nation. And far away from the city of Chicago. Mm-hmm. I want Tina to do well. Absolutely do. I from can hear it in your the voice. the bottom of my heart, I want them to do well. Because it just gives the wrestling fans and the talent more of an opportunity. And it seems like with their current world champion, they're going to do extremely well absolutely ken anderson you can't you know really yeah hmm. don't get me started i'm already hot the way it is i played some stupid street fighter song instead of my na 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 come on That's mortal street <laughs> fighter mortal combat rihanna's what's the, injured what's she's the on difference? the ir no she's not she's the fine. stage blew up then somebody well, she's giving lap yeah. dances on kind stage. of funny how you know she leaves your town of chicago and now there's a problem with the stage damian nelson <clears throat> Allstate Arena, right? Where Money in the Bank is this Sunday. Uh huh. I don't know nothing about no fire. Okay. I'm just saying. Final call, Adamar from New Hampshire. You're live on line one. Hello? Hello. Hello, Damien. Hello, Mr. Hero. Hello, lovely in the game. How are you guys doing tonight? Fantastic. Tremendous. I was the guy who um who wanted the Cody Rose team earlier tonight. Fantastic. And, All right, cut him. <laughs> and Mr. Hero, Mr. Hero, I actually I, I like Del Rio way more than Cody Rose. Well, well, then why don't you ask for that thing? We all have tonight. our faults. But the Alberta the Real Steam is a lot more boring than Cody Rose. Thank I you. love Oh! So, trust me. But I can make a promise that the Real will be champions first than Cody Rose. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, shoot. <laughs> but anyway, With that string of luck, you might want to go out and buy some lottery tickets. Maybe. <laughs> Anyway, I want to talk about CM Punk real quickly. Quickly. Okay. And well, only spent say, you know two hours on him. Okay, I was gonna say that in Money in the Bank, what they should do is I want to make Miz a face. So what I would do is I would, well, some way have I'll 
I'd probably win Money in the Bank and then have him turn with CM Punk and have CM Punk win the championship by giving him the Money in the Bank briefcase that he wants. And then CM Punk can go away for a little, could be champ, and they could fight SummerSlam, Miz could turn face and try to destroy the monster that he made. And that way, that Nakina wouldn't touch up actually for a long time, Miz would turn face, and things would be perfect. That's just the way I think it should go. All right, thank you very much for those comments. Adam Mark from New Hampshire. What does that look for? Wait, you got a problem with C pipes now? No, no, I have no problem at all with C pipes. I'm just saying, you know what? You... Why are you sitting over there all closed up? Your little arms closed? Because I'm frustrated. You look like a, you know, like 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 something happened to Mighty Mouse earlier. And Mighty Mouse is in. Uh, he, he'll be fine. There are big time points on the line in the draft oh this God. Sunday for Humanity the fantasy draft. Points. We were both able to score thirty points last night from TNA's paper. I got just opening you in the lead. I got poster yeah, points. Just stop it. Want to throw congratulations out to. Uh, our fan of the year, Jonathan Orchard, who's in the lead. Because he picked the same guys as me. We're going to be back with you on Monday. Big show this upcoming Monday night, David Hero. Let's talk about Sunday, though, because we will be at the Allstate Arena at ringside, sitting right behind Michael Cole, by the way. That should be I've interesting. I've got my straw and my spitballs. That should be interesting. We're going to be providing updates all day from Chicago on uh, WWE Money you in the Bank. You got your grocery bag with the eyes on it, too? And on Monday, next week, right here on 540 ESPN and streaming live at ESPNMilwaukee.com, the post show for not only Money in the Bank, but that night's Raw, along with all the latest happenings in professional wrestling. For Linda Kay and David Hero, who's still pouting about the Mortal Kombat thing. It was a flawless victory, in my opinion. Street this Fighter. is Damian yeah. Nelson saying thank you so much for tuning in to the Pro Wrestling Report right here on 540 ESPN and ESPNMilwaukee.com.